Hello everybody, it's me, Charles Norman, Sports Solutions LLC. We are the creators of Athletic SOS, and if your kid is trying to get an athletic scholarship, you want to use our software. And so down below, there is a link to uh, explain what the software is so you can kind of see how it works. And then I give you a code so you can use it at absolutely no cost. I want to thank you guys for watching the YouTube channel. And so that's my way of giving back to you guys so it's no cost to use it. I give you a code, I give you instructions for how to use the code. Please use the software. If you have a kid that can play at the next level, let's give them the best chance to get there. So in this one, I'm going to go over the number one question I get from everyone. And you think, because I'm in the youth sports industry and I'm trying to help kids get athletic scholarships, that it would be something about that, but it is not. The number one question I get when I do exhibits, when I go and do demos of the software, when I, anything that I do around um, business, I get a question, the same question over and over and over. Should I start a business? People ask me this, parents ask me this, grandparents ask me this, even uh, some of the youth that are uh, like uh, in high school, they'll ask me the same question, should you start a business? And so if you do, how should you go about it? I get it from family members, I get it from everybody. Most people don't follow through, but before I give you my answer to that, um, I'm gonna say this, you should not be listening to anybody on the internet giving you any kind of financial information. I am not telling you what to do or what you should do or you know anything like that. So take everything with a, a grain of salt. Don't necessarily listen to somebody on the internet giving you advice on how to spend your money, spend your time or anything like that. You're gonna have to decide for yourself what you move forward with. Now having said that, I think not only in 2024, because I'm doing this on uh, New Year's Eve 2023, um, in 2024 and moving forward, if you do not start a business, you must start a business. I think it's imperative <laughs> that you start a business. Otherwise, I think from now between 2024 and 2034, if you don't, you, financially you're gonna move down, your standard of living is gonna move down a level. So let's say you're middle class, you're gonna to go to lower middle class. I'm, and I'm meaning your standard of living, what you are able to, to buy and do and move around, your free income uh, that, that's discretionary. All that's gonna lower down. And it's gonna happen simply because the way the financial environment is, uh, you having a job and getting a paycheck is not gonna cover the cost of living moving forward in the same way it did the previous 10 years. And really to me, and I tell everybody that'll listen to me this, 2020 was a demarcation point. Everything pre-2020, forget about it. Everything 2020 moving forward is a whole different world. And that world accelerated so quickly, normally it would have smoothed out and maybe it would have taken 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40 years for it to all play out. It accelerated double time, in my opinion, maybe four or five times as fast. And so what's going to happen now is, is that your money simply won't carry as far. So if you get a paycheck, and I don't care how much money you make anywhere from $30,000 to $150,000, if you're in that range, then you're going to, your standard of living is going to drop. If you do not start a business, your standard of living is going to drop. It won't be horrible. You probably won't, you know, fall apart or anything like that. But if you're okay with that, that's fine. You can cut things out here and there. Don't do some things that you would have done before and just kind of change your life around a little bit. And, I, and you know what, you'll be okay. If that's good with you, go for it, no, no problem. If you are a professional, and let's say you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, uh, you're an uh, uh, accountant, whatever it is your profession is, if you get a check from someone, I don't care if you're a doctor, you work for Kaiser or Blue Cross or something like that, they're writing you a check. If anybody's writing you a check, you're an attorney in a, in a really prestigious firm, if they're giving you a check and some bonus uh, checks and things like that, you're still in a little bit of trouble because technology and to be competitive in this world, you have to limit the amount of employees you have. And I think that's the biggest thing that people don't see with uh, the way the world is moving. In order to be competitive in this world now, it used to be you could go out and you could, get, uh, you could take money on, right, to, to expand, to do uh, research and development, to do things like that. There are a lot of businesses that made no profit for, for years and years and years, but you could take out a loan and then you can go back and refinance that loan to pay off the loan you took off before because interest rates were so low. You're, you're doing a zero or 1% loan, that's almost like free money. And so it, people hired a bunch of people and made their business look bigger, which means if you go public, 
then people will give you, you know, want to buy into your business. You get, you get some marketing going on. You get some, uh, you put out some articles written about your company, all this kind of stuff. And people want to invest. They want to be a part of that. And then there was the venture capital. I, nobody more than me, the first few years when I started this business, I have a great product. Our software is fantastic. I used to go out and do pitches and look at VC money. And I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any money. I was doing, I thought I was doing great. I got a couple of offers, but they wanted like 30% of the company for almost no money, basically. No, just, just, I think they were just throwing it out there to see if I would bite. And I wouldn't do it. And so finally somebody came up and told me, a, a VC, a person who does a VC, they do angel investing. And they told me, they said, when people are coming to see if they want to invest, especially in the VC world, they're not investing in you and your product. Yeah, your product's great. There's a, there's a million great products. They're either investing in your, your uh, team. Who's on your team? Who's on your board? Who are those people? Because the way the business world works is, and I'm going to get to this a little bit more later on, is whoever's on your team, can they move you to the next level because of their connections? That is what they're looking for. So that's number one. Number two, they will invest in you if somebody they're trying to get next to is willing to invest in you. So if there's a, a big whale out there, a big VC person or a, a, a company that does, uh, does uh, things like moves money around a lot and the person will invest in you so that they can get close to the person who invested in you, the other person invested in you, if that makes sense. So, that, and so once I learned that, I go, okay, I don't need to be running around doing all these pitches all the time because I did not have a board. I wasn't set up that way. And so I want to talk about how I set up what I'm doing and where I am. So the number one, the, the answer to the question is yes, you should start a business. And number two, I think you must start a business. Now, if you guys have been following me at all, when I talk about uh, youth sports and things like that, um, I always talk about what we're trying to do here at Sports Solutions, especially with our athletic SOS uh, product. And we've got some other stuff coming out in 2024. That's why I'm so excited about everything. Um, we talk about getting your kids positioned to be successful later. So they're going to leverage their athletic ability to make the rest of their life successful. Whether they go pro, whether they play in college, I don't care if they're five years old and they stop playing at 10 years old. We're trying to get them in a position to where they are going to be successful. So how does that even work? So these are the two things that um, I've realized. Oh, so first thing is, if you decide to move in this direction, I need you to understand a few things. It is going to be not worth it for the first seven to 10 years. You're gonna get very little traction. Even if you're already in the industry that you wanna go into, the people that you thought were gonna help you, the people that you know, they're not gonna help you. <laughs> They, they, they are not going to go out on a limb to help you, especially if you try to go out on your own. They're not going to do it. So that's the first thing you're going to look at. The second thing is you're going to, uh, your friends and your family, all the people that are close to you, you, they're going to start moving away from you because your thought process is going to be completely different. So the people that you're going to end up working with, the people that are going to help you the most are people you haven't even met yet. So you need to get that into your head. And so if you can handle all that, it's going to be seven to 10 years of, of pure agony for you personally. And it's the most lonely thing you've ever done in your life because no one understands all the frustrations you're going to go through, all the ups and downs, the heartbreaks, everything you're going to go to, the, the moments when you thought you broke it. You know, Charles is talking this seven to 10 years, three years in, something's going to happen. It looks like you're there and then it's going to, it's going to trickle away on you. And I hope it's there and you get it. But I'm just telling you how the world really works. But it's that seven to 10 year mark, you're gonna to start to see it. It's gonna to start to come in. And you're a completely different person. And, and, and the world is wondrous to you. It, and, and it doesn't even matter what else is happening, whatever's going on, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, this is like, you know, and you wanna do this. And here's why it's so important to do it. And I don't care if you're a grandparent, you're a parent, um, you don't have any kids yet, whatever. You're doing this for, the people in the future because once you go through this you will be able to shorten that that uh, timeline for your kids and for your grandkids and here's the other thing and the real reasons I'm doing this I'm setting a standard for my family I just got a grandkid this year and I'm setting the standard my kids have seen me go through this my my wife is is there she doesn't believe in a lot of this entrepreneurial stuff she because she can't fathom it from where we came from you know, we both of us uh, grew up in South L.A. and, uh, you know, we sort of made it through. And for our families, we're successful to them. I worked for the government, got into technology, 
systems area, it exploded during my career, right? And so I rode that wave all the way out. And my wife does really good, she's an accountant. So she's done really well. And so to, to the rest of the world, and when I say really well, we're middle class, maybe creeping in the upper, but we're, we're not running around uh, flossing anybody. So uh, we did okay. And then now I've taken off, retired from what I was doing with the government, and I started my own company and I did it because I saw the writing on the wall. Uh, last week I did a video and I, I did something basically saying that youth sports was more valuable than, uh, than uh, STEM. And boy, the people that are in youth sports all supported me, but educators, uh, uh, parents, everybody came at me the other side as if I was saying that, um, you know, you shouldn't take STEM and it's not the future, especially because I got where I, I got in technology, right? So STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And so it felt like I was being a little bit hypocritical. Oh, you made it, but you're gonna close the door behind you type thing. But that's not where I was going with it. What I was trying to say is what I've seen is if you go into STEM, it's not gonna be the financial windfall that it used to be if you got into it. Even in the last few years, right before um, uh, 2020, people were making a ton of money, Silicon Valley, and then it was spreading out. I know in Houston and in Boston, there were all these areas where all these, these tech hubs were coming in and people were just getting into tech. And, and what I saw was most people in the U.S., I'm just going to be talking about people in the U.S., they want to do it, but they don't need it. And then what I was starting to see was the rest of the world. See, this tech, technology is global. Science is global. Uh, engineering is global. And now we're in a global world. It used to be that, you know, if you came from the U.S. or you came from here, you came from there, um, you, you were seen elevated and you would make a bunch of money. But now you're competing against some really, really smart people all over the world that want it, that need it. They don't just want it, they need it. And they're willing to work for a lower price than you are just to get over here or to stay where they are. They'll do the work over there at a fraction of the cost because their cost of living is, is much smaller. And so now you're a technology company and you, 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 you first you were making money because there were this, it was this low interest rate world, right? I could just borrow money. We keep borrowing or people are investing in us, investing in us. But after 2020, when they flooded the market with all that money and then inflation hit and then the Fed raised the fund rate and the fund rate makes the interest rates go up and I'm not doing a financial literacy course here, but basically I can't go get borrowed cheap money anymore. And your VCs that used to just give money out like candy, right? You, you invest in 20, 30 companies, you only need two or three to hit and you made all that money back that you invested in those other companies that didn't hit. And if the, some of the other companies did okay, you still did pretty good. But if the, you just needed a couple to, to make it, but now all that money's dried up. And now it's only going to people that have the right board members, that they have the, the, the right people investing so that I can invest with those investments, the stuff I talked about earlier. That's where all that VC money's going now. So a lot of those companies that were getting all of that money, it's dried up. And so now what do you do? You gotta get rid of some of the people working. You either fold the whole company in, or you pivot to something else, or you join, you get absorbed by somebody else, and now jobs start getting eliminated and so the jobs that are getting eliminated unfortunately are a lot of the jobs that a lot of people that went to college for it i'm not talking about the 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 uh um, software engineers and people like that yeah they're getting laid off too and they made a bunch of money but i'm talking about the people that are in hr the people that are um uh, working all the different facets of, of a company that's there that that middle piece because technology can do some of that stuff now i live in california and so Starting tomorrow, on January 1st, our fast food workers out here are going to be mandatory if you have a certain number of employees or a certain number of locations, they got to make $20 an hour. And it sounds great to a lot of people, but I, by, by June of next year, most of those uh, companies, your McDonald's, your Wendy's, your whatever you know, fast food places are out here that have a lot of places, they're going to go, they're going to automate a lot of that stuff. They're going to eliminate a bunch of employees and they're going to put a whole bunch of people on part-time work. And so you're not ever going to catch up that way because companies need to show the, uh, the, the people that invest in it, their investors, that they are going to grow the bottom line because if you grow the bottom line, other people want to invest because your company looks like it's growing. It's making money. It's got profits. You have to show that. And the number one profit killer for most companies are the employees. I, I know everybody hates to hear that. We're the employees. If it wasn't for us, your company doesn't get there. But everybody's going to find out that technology changed everything. And the reason I always say 2020 moving forward is because 
everything accelerated in technology, everything accelerated in the medical field. Some of this stuff is going to be really positive, but some of it is going to be negative. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is this. I don't care if you're working uh, nine to five, um, that's fine. You keep that job. If you're going to college, go to college anyway. I'm not telling you not to go to college. Even though you can learn everything online, you want to go to college anyway because one, that piece of paper, that diploma, when you come out, gives you an advantage over the people that don't have it. And number two, the number one thing and that's going to make a difference in your life, and even if you start the business or you're doing anything, is going to be your network. I can't emphasize this enough. I spent the entire 2023 year working on building a network of people that wanted to work with me, that I wanted to work with, that I could benefit them, and I thought they could benefit me, and we were gonna to work together and grow something. And I got some great people I'm gonna be working with in this coming year. So that's why I'm so excited about 2024, where a lot of people are dreading it, right? Inflation's up, cost of everything, all of your staples, the things that you do in your life, your, your food, uh, your transportation, um, everything that you do, your entertainment, um, you know, just enjoying life just blew up as, as, as far in your basic life, just, just your day-to-day -day things, your medical costs, your, your uh, medicines, everything that, that you have to do, plus all the things you want to do, just went up in price. And so that's why I said your, your uh, standard of living it has to drop if you're not making any more money. And so let's get into what I think you're going to want to do if you're going to start a business, because a lot of people will start a business to try to make, make some extra money, start a business, and then you will stagnate. So here are some of the things that I'm going to tell you guys. And I'm not talking about people that are trying to do a little side hustle, right? You want to do an Etsy or an eBay. You've got a little bit of talent and this and that. Those things are not really, to me, starting a business in, in the sense of this is something I want to transition to that's going to raise our family standard of living and transfer down generations. So that, that's what I'm trying to, to get done. And so even, even those little things, though, those little side hustles, um, uh, they're not going to do it in 2024, but in 2025, they're coming for you guys with that stuff too, right? You're going to have to, anything over $600 you made has to be, you know, somebody has to report it, and they're coming after it. The government's broke. All that money they gave out during the uh, 2020, 2021, uh, all of that stuff, they, they're calling all that back now. And it's going to be fees, and it's going to be licensing fees, and it's going to be business taxes, and it's going to be personal taxes. They, they're they're, they're going to grab all of that money back. Because they're broke. The, the, the government is broke. They want their money back. And so they're going to get it back. But the one other thing that this, the, the government does do, especially the federal government, is they want to get people to start businesses to provide services and products that they can't provide to people. They want things done. And so they will incentivize you through the tax code to get those things done. That's why you want to start a business and you want to start a real business, whether it's an LLC. I don't recommend sole proprietorships, but do whatever you need to do to get started. And so you're going to want to start a true business. So you're going to need to get some money together and pay for a CPA to sit down and set your business up correctly. Try to find a fiduciary CPA. And that is just somebody whose job it is to make sure that your whatever they do benefits you and not them. And so and they may charge you a little bit more. They may charge you a flat rate. They may charge whatever they're going to do. But that's what I would be looking for. Uh, a CPA or a financial advisor that is a fiduciary. And they will say it if they are. They will, they will talk about it. So just Google for your area, whatever that is. And so you want to get your business set up. And you're going to need capital. And so when I say you need capital, if the, the way we want to do this, if you're doing it the way I do it, um, you're going to fund your own business. And I know that sounds scary because you barely got enough money to make it through what you're doing now. We just talked about that a minute ago. But that's what you want to do. So you're going to either need to take a second job. You're going to need to save up. You're going to need to get you and your spouse. Both of you guys may have to do something uh, separate. It's going to be uh, a little bit painful. I get that. But you're going to need to do that. You need to be able to make sure you can take care of your household. Now, you can downsize if you want to, but usually if you're married or something, <laughs> that's not going to apply unless you guys are really on the same page. But you need to keep your job, and you need to get some extra money coming in. And there's plenty of, of jobs you can do on the weekend, on the side, to start building up some money to, to go into your business, to try to fund that business moving forward. You don't want to go into the VC world, because that's going to be almost impossible to do anyway for whatever business you're going to try. And even if you do, you're giving up so much of your business, how is that not another job? So you might as well get another job. Why are you working for the other person to build your business? So that's number one. You're going to need some capital to pull this off. You can partner with somebody on your first deal. The other thing is 
Don't get so caught up into your idea or whatever business you want to get into and be selfish. You cannot make it. The number one thing, I just told you guys, this is your network. So you want to get with some good people and you guys can go in. Now, how do you, how do you uh, eliminate that anxiety of going into business or you got this product and you want to get it and you need to tell people about it and you need to network with people and you're scared they're going to steal it or you're going to come out on the short end of the stick because they're going to cheat you somewhere down the line and you didn't know that much about business and they did some shenanigans in the contract or the way that you set up the banking account and they took all the money out and ran and all, all of that stuff. Let's say the worst case scenario and all of that happens to you. You still learn how to set up a business. You still learn how to get into the business and you're going to learn stuff along the way. And so you need to have your next thing ready to go. So whatever you decide to get into initially, start looking for what your next thing is. The next thing you're going to do is, and you don't, maybe you're not quite sure what type of business to get into. So what industry are you in now? So take me for instance, I've been in technology my whole life. I worked for the government, but my kids played sports. And then I got an opportunity when my daughter was pretty good. Um, I was, uh, we were put on, uh, it was back in 2008, 2009. That's how long ago all of this got started for me. Um, my, I was put on furlough from my job. And so her coach, her head coach at the high school taught me how to help her get an athletic scholarship. He used to be a junior college coach. And so he had this database with all of the schools. And then we wrote letters and sent videos of her playing and he put it on his letterhead. And that's how I came up with Athletic SOS. And that was like 10 years later, right? So I took what he showed me to help my daughter and I digitized that. So I took my technology background, my government background, because how do you find that database? I just happened to be in that world where I knew how to find those databases because those databases are government databases and they're available to anybody. You just got to figure out where they are. And so, and then I knew how to do the, uh, to, to create the website. I understood what SAS was because this is what I do for a living. So I took my skill set, took it to another industry, and then I walked into it. And then I made the biggest mistake ever because I didn't have any connections in there. And so that's that seven to 10 year window. And so I started out thinking I could, you know, I've got this great product, but that's not how the world works. You have to build a network. People that are already in an industry do not want you coming into that industry and taking money out of it. That's their money in their, in their opinion. So they don't want you coming in to get any of it. So you're going to have to become an and you're going to have to be an asset to people that are already in that industry. So that's the way you want to think about it. The next thing you want to think about is you want to become a brand. You want to become known for something. I talk about this with the, the youth in sports. How do you get that athletic scholarship? What are you known for? Are you a great defensive player? Are you a heady player? Are you uh, just a super talented player? You can do everything. You can do this specific thing. And so if you match up with someone that needs what you do and you're known for that thing, that gives you the best chance to get that uh, scholarship or get that opportunity. But also, if you have a great network, that's even better than you doing all the other stuff put together because somebody can, be, can speak on your behalf. And so they can get you in where it's not the best players to get the scholarship. It's the best position players. And so that network is part of that position. And so you're going to do the same thing in business. You're going to come up with, and it doesn't even matter what you do. What is the one that they always talk about on the internet is people going to college and it's a waste. Oh, basket weaving. Let's say you took basket weaving in college and you wasted 50 grand now, right? You went to college for four years and you're in this arts program and you got into this basket weaving. Seems like it's a horrible thing. But what I'm trying to tell everybody is if you go to college and you're taking basket weaving, you better be into basket weaving. And so you come out of there and you start making these really beautiful, elaborate baskets because you studied about some ancient uh, tribe somewhere in the middle, in the, in the 800 BC that used to make baskets a certain way. And so you're duplicating that, but you bring it into the modern world and people recognize that. And your baskets are just the most beautiful baskets in the world. And your baskets use this weaving technique that is waterproof, like water can't even come out of it or whatever it is. Now, even though you took basket weaving, you've got something that's unique. And so people start to hear about that. So now you got to brand your what you do and you got to brand yourself. You're going to have to get out there. I did not see myself sitting on this out here in this park uh, talking about uh, my software and all that kind of stuff on YouTube and having a YouTube channel. I, that was the furthest from my mind. In fact, what I did initially was I created a database and an API and I was going to make it offer it out to other uh, recruiting services. They could use our service. And it was working, but it kind of 
they tried to go around me and they made some bad deals there. So finally I said, you know what, I need to do this for myself. And I put a front end on it, and that's what Athletic SOS is. It's the same thing I started off with, but I moved forward. And so I've got some other stuff that I'm going to do later. So do you see how with the, with the uh, basket weaving? And then let's say you're in basket weaving and um, you realize, oh, you know what? The, the way we do the things we're doing now, we, we have this resin that we can put on there because we went to these. You're going to go to all of these conventions and expos and things like that. You're going to get into because you're a real business. Right. So you get to get into some places that other people don't get into. The people that are playing around on the outside, they can't even get into a lot of these expos and, and conventions and things like that. And then you're going to find out this new technique for making yours waterproof. And now you're making uh, uh, furniture. You saw the wicker furniture was out for about 10 years. I, I didn't think that was a great idea, but you see it sometimes when you go to nice resorts and stuff like that. But now that you've got this technique that you do, your furniture looks different than everybody else's. And people start to see it and you start to exhibit out there. Now this big hotel chain comes and goes, we want that in our place because we're at this high level, we're a luxury level. This will look great where we are. You see what I mean when I'm saying you're starting a business, you're building a brand, you're becoming known for something. So that's what you want to do. And the next thing you want to do is you want to network with other people that are in that world that you're into. And I don't mean the basket weaving world. I mean, where do you want your stuff to end up? And so if you want to be in high end luxury, you got to get you got to get connected to people that are in the high end luxury world. So you get around people that that do uh, furnishing for for, uh, for resorts. Right. Because your your wicker furniture is a little bit different than everybody else's. You can be your furniture can be sitting out on the beach and it's not going to get tattered and, and messed up because you've got this unique situation. You can go in and say, hey, why don't we put a couple of my pieces in there? I'll give them to you. Just let's just try it. You know, you start working with other people. You have to benefit the people that are above you. If you can benefit them, then they will bring you along with them. And then they can do some of the negotiating up front early on and say, hey, you know, we've got this new line we're bringing in and this is how much it's going to cost. And then they give you a piece of it, too. But in the meantime, you still want to make sure you always have an off ramp. Now, I think this is the biggest thing ever. Never get so enamored with somebody else that's carrying you that you're not working on something on the side. And so maybe on the side, you decide, hey, we got this money coming in from these luxury resorts and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? I kind of like uh, that, that those air balloon things because down there, they, they do these things where they do the air. So you're going to make the best air balloon baskets ever. They're all comfortable. They've got nice seats in them. You can have champagne in there. You've got a whole. I, I don't even know. I'm just making this up on the fly as I'm sitting here right now. It's not something I thought about before. But do you see what I'm saying? And so at some point in time, you're going to come out of that world and you're going to start importing things from uh, another country because you're visiting everywhere. And see, and this is the other piece of it. Now you can start traveling. You can start uh buying, you know, you're going to buy a commercial property in the business uh, name and you're writing all this stuff off, right? So it's not costing you what you think it's going to cost you. And you're starting to make profit and you're starting to hire people, but your kids are watching. And then here's the biggest piece and why you should be starting a business regardless is because now someday your kids or your grandkids are going to be able to pick up the phone and make a phone call and say, Hey, my mom, my dad, my uncle, my granddad, somebody, told me to give you a call. Here's my name. That's their, here's their name. And they're going to go, oh, hey, no problem. What can I do for you? And that is the magic of being in business. That is the difference that you are setting a, a, a baseline for everybody to build on top of after you. So I hope that makes sense to everybody here. I hope you guys have a remarkable 2024 that you take a chance on yourself. You know, I know everybody talks about investing and and getting into you know Bitcoin and stocks and, and becoming your own banker and doing all this, this cool stuff that you would have to go in and learn about anyway. Why not invest in yourself? That is the question I ask everybody. Why not invest in yourself? And the second question I always ask when somebody comes in and once you start moving and they go, hey, you know, I, I got some money here. I'd like to invest in what you're doing. I, I always ask, I go, what's the difference between if you give me that money, how am I not working for you? And what was the point of all this? If I'm going to work for you, I could have just got a job. OK, so that is the difference. And I know you guys are super busy. I know there's so much going on in the world. I know everybody's hurting a little bit right now. But this is the moment. Everything's about to change. Right. Interest rates, I think, are going to stay elevated for a while. So all that free money is dried up. This is the moment that you go get into something and you work your way, you stack your way up. You got to have capital to do it. So you're going to have to get, get a second job. Whatever you need to do, you need to do. That's the best way to put it. And so that's the thing I'm trying to instill in our kids as they move through. So I hope you guys um, rock with me the rest of the year. Next week, it'll be my first one for 2024. 
and we're going to really get into getting your kids in position. I'm going to talk a lot about the stuff that we're putting out moving forward. I got a bunch of cool stuff coming in. And this past year, I took some some hits, some things that I thought were going to happen didn't happen. And it was because people ran out of uh, runway financially. And so I went to those people also and I said, hey, there were some people that I had uh, uh, invested money in for some projects that we were going to do. And I said, well, hold on to that and let's just hang in there and try to do something in 2024 and we'll do it in 2024. And I think I inspired a couple of people to, to stay put and, and to ride it out because a lot of people are very frustrated. It is very frustrating when you think you're doing everything right and you don't realize how vulnerable you really are. You've got to have people that's got your back. And then those people, um, as we move forward, they'll remember what I did for them. And that's not why I did it. But I will remember that they hung in there, too. And so when I run into trouble at some point, hopefully they'll be there available to me. And maybe it's not for me. It'll be for somebody later on down the line that I can make a phone call on, on, on their behalf. So those are all the things we're trying to do. So 2024, no matter what, invest in yourself, whether you're going to start a business. You're going to invest in your kids a little bit more. You want to get them in that framework, even if you have to start something just to show them that you're willing to start something. All of that is good. But I hope you guys do something and I hope you do something spectacular. And I hope you guys leave a comment down below to inspire somebody else. If you're going to do it, let everybody else know you're going to do it. But actually do it. Don't talk about it. OK, because I, I got a lot of people to talk about. I've sat down and, and consulted with family members and friends and we sit down and and and. They haven't done anything yet, and then I hate it because sometimes I come in or we're, we're at an event or something, and they shy away from me, and I just want to be family and friends. I, so I, I almost want to stop doing it, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on them this year because hopefully they'll start doing something. But either you're going to um, um, decide to fall, behind, fall back a little bit in life but still be okay, or you're going to start moving forward because there's going to be the haves and the have-nots at some point. And I think sometime in the next 10 years, you're going to see that separation just grow. The government can't force anybody to do enough for you to make it work the other way. Okay. All right, guys. As always, best of luck to you in all your endeavors and best of luck to you and your kids. And next week, let's get started. Let's get all these kids uh, moving forward in their athletic uh, pursuits. And we want to have, make sure they're all successful in that. And I think I've got a plan to do that. Talk to you guys later. Bye.